Ronald Edwards and Eric Gordon if you come up. Tell them what it's like to make your debut view in a brand new piece by a dead composer and surprised well, uh, by a live composer. <laughs> it, the, this uh, particular debut was a very exciting occasion. Uh, it, uh, it remains, with possibly the exception of uh, the piece that you wrote for me, <laughs> the, uh, one of the, the, the most theatrical experience I believe I've ever been involved with. Uh, I should mention, I, I should have mentioned before, I'm going to do it now, that Ron, uh, when I met him, was a baritone, and since then he's become a tenor, but in the meantime he learned and sang over 90 baritone roles, and now what, 12, 13 tenor roles? Something like Something that. Like that in uh, states all over the country, and uh, one of the next roles that he's planning to do is uh, the role that he mentioned in an opera that I wrote for him a few years ago that is uh, supposedly going to be done in Dresden one of these days, but they keep postponing it, we'll see. <laughs> Not from wood. <laughs> but, uh, in, in addition to be, having been both the hero and the villain in this, maybe someday I'll make a suitable video as well. <laughs> Anything else? I had a sort of question. Yeah. Uh, that you as a uh, historian of Lariat uh, and you as completer of, of uh, Idiot's Birds might both be able to shed some light on, and that is um, what uh, remained of uh, the trilogy tales of Malamud. I know there were some sketches on the magic barrel. I wondered if a third subject, a yeah. third yeah. play, uh, that's a wonderful story. story. Uh, that, that's a story that uh, I have some inside knowledge on, as a matter of fact, but it's, there's no reason it shouldn't become public, so let me tell that. Um, you, we mentioned Juno, in, uh, the, uh, the musical Juno that we did a couple of excerpts from, um, and that was based on Shono Case's Juno and the Peacock. Ellie Siegmeister, my teacher, wanted to set Juno and the Peacock to music. Mark Blitzstein got there first, so Ellie Siegmeister picked another Sean O'Casey play, The Plow and the Stars, and wrote a beautiful <coughs> opera based on that. Uh, Ellie Siegmeister also wanted to set to music uh, Bernard Malamud's opera, uh, Bernard Malamud's uh, story, The Angel Levine. Again, Mark got there first. He was going to write a trilogy, as, Mar as, as Ron mentioned, of operas called Tales of Malamud. It was to be Idiots First, The Magic Barrel, and The Angel of Eden. Malamud sold The Angel of Eden to the movies and the, had to sign a, a contract whereby uh, it was impossible for any uh, operatic work to be made of it and that it could be sold in any way. So both Blitzstein and Siegmeister were, were out of a, a subject for an opera. But uh, Blitzstein decided, as he was working on Idiots First and The Magic Barrel, that the two of them were actually long enough to make an entire evening. So he just dropped The Angel of Eden and he was going to have Idiot's First and Magic Barrel as the, as their only, as the only two uh, uh, elements in Tales of Malamud. Uh, when he died, the Magic Barrel was just barely completed, just barely started. It was a scene and a song. Whereas Idiot's First had several, ver several complete versions of the libretto, it was a matter of choosing among them. And most of the music was there. There was enough musical material there that it could be developed compositionally, just based on the thematic material there and the whole piece could be fleshed out. Some very major scenes were missing, but they could, in fact, be fleshed out based on the material that was there. Uh, that's exactly what I did. It took me three years, but I finished that opera uh, after several composers were asked to do it, including Siegmeister, who referred uh, the Blitzstein estate to me, in fact. And Bernstein, if I'm not mistaken. Bernstein was the first who was asked. He worked on it for six months. He gave up. David Diamond was asked to do it, and he, in fact, uh, was by mistake shown the wrong opera. He, uh, he went to the office and looked at, at, the, at the, an opera that he thought was Idiot's First. It wasn't. It was The Magic Barrel. And he said, there's not enough here to do. I can't do this. Nobody can do this. Years later, when I played in my completion here at Juilliard, right around the corner, he said, oh my god, you, this was the opera. Of course, Mark played this for me. I must have been shown the wrong opera. And he said, I'm so glad that you finished it. You did such a great job. I might have been tempted to do it, but you, I mean, he, he really was really wonderful about it. David Dines and, and William Balcom was also asked to finish it. And he toyed with the idea of finishing it for a while. He loved The Cradle of Rock, but he decided that uh, Mark's later work was not quite uh, as close to him and his style as uh, the uh, jazzy stuff of the earlier period. Balcom is very known for his rags and so forth. 
Uh, so uh, it fell to me, and I finished. I worked on it from 1970 to 1973, December of 73. And uh, then it was produced in 74 and uh, in Cornell, in 76 in Indiana, and 78 here in New York. Uh, I think that kind of answers your question. Oh, the aftermath of that is that uh, uh, L.E. Siegmeister, in the meantime, did Very write an Angel Levine, uh, because Malamud came to the performance here in New York in 78, and liked the opera so much, he said to me, I've decided I like my works made into operas better than into movies, because in the movies they open it up so much, and in an opera you can use really what I wrote. So he bought the rights back from the movies, gave them to Siegmeister, who wrote uh, two uh, Malamud operas that were performed at the Y in 1985, uh, the Lady of the Lake and the Angel Levine. 